you think the Western world has an accurate or fair viewpoint for Dharmic religions now? In fact, look, look up the, say, the media presentation. You'd be very surprised, and I watch it as well. If you look at the big BBC big questions or the moral issues being discussed, you will see who will you see as, as kind of participants. Of course, the Christian lobby, the Jewish lobby, very strong, and the Muslim lobby. Because the Muslim lobby is very, you know, kind of very, kind of very strong, so it has to be calmed down. So the media will give tremendous importance to Islam and Muslim lobby and completely ignore the Dharmic tradition. I've not seen a single program is done by BBC which shows Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism or Jainism in a, in a positive light. It always shows them as kind of weirdos. So it's a very frightening scenario. So the West has got a very poor opinion of that part of the world in the, in the religion, the Dharmic tradition that came out of that particular world, part of the world, has been not given any exposure whatsoever. And the only exposure they give is to show some kind of weirdness in this tradition. Some, you know, fucking smoking ganja, Hinduism. Come on now. So this is, if you like, the very poor way they portray Hinduism in the West. And I fight them all the time. Look, I tell you, again, I'm, I'm saying this in, in, on air. The BBC called me for some certain kind of you know, consultation regarding how religion should be presented in BBC. They had some very high power meeting with me, two or three hours vested, spent, I should say. And I said, look, if you want to really promote how to pre present religion in this world that we live in, promote the two ideas at the heart of Hinduism, pluralism, many ways to be spiritual, and the idea of spiritual humanism, focusing on humanity and not on God in heaven. And the third thing I said you can plug in is to plug in the idea that science and spiritual are not that distant, they are kind of pointing in the same direction. Three things I can say, plug it in. And then I got a reply after six months of hassle, Oh, Mr. Lakhani, we have thought about it. We are going to talk about pluralism because we are going to in a way show a program on BBC about pilgrimage from here to Rome. This is pluralism? And what about this idea of science and spirituality? Well, this spiritual humanism completely ignored because this goes against the Christian ethos. Dignifying humanity is, is, is the spark of God. It's not accepted. We are sinners. So again, spiritual humanism, zero. They told me we have not, no plans, no programs for that. Only program you're going to watch on BBC in the next year is going to be this pilgrimage to Rome. And the other program you'll watch is this idea of Diwali. Hindus love Diwali, they have fireworks. That's all. Just imagine how poorly Hinduism is portrayed in the mainstream media. To a great extent, um, they still have this colonial attitude, saying these are kind of secondary people, you know, kind of backward people, so we can show them in the way we like. We are still the, they are, we are still the masters. But one thing the Guardian newspaper said, which touched me, was this. Is they said, with the, with the arrival of Narendra Modi on the political scene in India, first time the British rule has ended. He's not, he's not a clone of the British Empire. He's not going to play ball with them. So he's going to kind of promote the idea of Hinduism in an honest manner, in a sincere manner, refocus the attention of that nation back to spirituality and not this kind of half-baked secularism that Nehru brought in. I just recently realized that you did a recording on BBC on the caste issue. And I'm really keen to know what actually happened because, you know, it's a big, big uh, hoo-ha about this in the UK a while back, yes? Indeed. <coughs> You see, the BBC, the high power BBC, uh, approached me about six months or one year back saying, Mr. Lakani, how can you present Hinduism into the media in the BBC? I said, no problem. So we had three big meetings, long meetings for one hour each. And I said, promote the following ideas of Hinduism which are relevant for the world that we live in. The ideas were basically very simple. The idea of religious pluralism, spiritual democracy, so that people don't kill each other in the name of religion. I said, put that in, number one. Number two, I said, put in the idea of spiritual humanism. You are not just matter, lump of matter like Richard Dawkins. We are something more than matter, and this is called spiritual humanism. I said, this is the second feature that you must promote in, our, in, our, in, in the media. And the third thing I said, this, uh, unlike other religions, Hinduism is no difficulty with esoteric ideas of science today. The ideas of quantum and consciousness sit very well with the deeper vision of Hinduism, which is principle-oriented. So I said, these are the ideas you must promote uh, on, 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 on BBC. And after three big meetings, finally he came back and said, ah, what have we agreed now? What are you going to present? He said, Mr. Lakhani, we decided that the way we are going to promote pluralism is very simple. We're going to tell uh, there's going to be a pilgrimage of a Christian minister from London going to Spain. I said, that's pluralism? <laughs> very sad. I said, what about spiritual humanism? He said, no, we have no plans for it. The reason is very simple. BBC is controlled by a Christian lobby. And the idea of that you are not the sinners, but you are the, you know, the, 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 if you like the divinity on earth, this is kind of incredibly, you know, kind of opposite to what Christianity teaches. So there's no way they're going to promote that. And what about science and Hinduism? They say, well, we already have some other ideas in our mind, so we'll leave it for the time being. 
And then I said, what are you going to actually going to present? And this is what I heard. They said two things we're going to present this year on BBC regarding Hinduism. One is the caste system. And the second is Diwali, fireworks and feasting. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so we show Hinduism in this slide. And they came to interview me uh, last week regarding the caste issue. And I was very rough. I hope they don't edit me out when the actual program goes out in autumn. I said, this on BBC One TV, so it's a very important slot. I said, look, if you want to ban or put in the clause, legal clause, that no discrimination based on caste, then I just add one more word, no discrimination based on caste or class. And they were amazed by it. What do you mean by class? I said, look, the English class system is precisely the same as the Hindu's hereditary hierarchical caste system. No different. By mere birth, you are something special. Like the queen, for example, she's not only head of the, head of, head of the state, just by mere birth, she's head of the church too. I said, you've beaten us. <laughs> so this is the class that you must attack and be, challenge, be, be challenging. I said, I'm quite open to that. And I think they have taken all these comments and uh, I don't know how much of it will get through in the actual edited version, but I've done my bit. Yeah. So I just wanted to you know, bring you up to date on, on, on this issue of caste that BBC keep rubbing in our face because they think there's a weakness of this tradition. Let's show that. And I say it's not the weakness, it is very clear, it's a human failing, nothing to do with our, our religion. Why is the media so bent into trying to portray Hindus or India in a poor light? This is a very sad state of affairs. This has started since the time of the Christian missionaries, not gone away, unfortunately. This has been, I feel like, a, a carryover. Because so much mud has been slung against this, you know, flung against this nation and its religion for so many thousands of years, that habit has not died away. Even today, I'm telling you the biggest culprit is the BBC. I'm very bluntly saying that on air, I, I wish they would sue me. The BBC's portrayal of India or Hinduism is so poor, so negative, they have never shown anything positive about India or Hinduism which is important for their own society, for the Western world, for the greater world. They will never portray Hinduism in a good light. However hard I try, this kind of lovely vision of Hinduism, they will never allow to be broadcast to the mainstream public in this country because it will definitely capture their attention and heart and they'll realize that what we are, with the nation we were vilifying was in fact something to, from where we can learn a lot of things suitable, suited to our own nation. Ideas of spiritual humanism, for example, is a tremendous transition. So it is an unfortunate legacy, if you like, that for hundreds of years, the Christian missionaries who were trying to demolish, if you like, the Hindu tradition, has developed this habit of seeing India and Hinduism in the poorest light possible. You can always do that to any religion, any culture, any society, any civilization. You can always pick out things which are really weird and focus on them and ignore. So there are two ways the media can be show its, 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 its bias. First, it can show its bias by, in a way, uh, showing the negative thing about the, the, the kind of little, you know, you know, weird stuff about the religion. And the second way they show their bias is by not portraying the positive thing that sits there by ignoring it, bypassing it. And this is, in fact, the, the, the issue that I'm struggling with. I'm hoping to bypass this media bias by going to social media in a big way. At the moment, nearly a thousand people are coming on our YouTube channel and it's expanding dramatically. So if hundreds of thousands of people are now latching onto this social media to learn about Hinduism in India and then the, 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 the beautiful, beautiful aspect of Hinduism, we will soon bypass these kind of very biased media presentations. So when I landed in UK, uh, somebody at the airport asked me, is India still land of snake charmers? I thought a little bit and I didn't reply to that question. Rather, I asked them another question, is UK still a land of witches? So do you have <laughs> something about that? Oh, indeed. So it's a very nice question. <clears throat> you see, as I said, somehow the media has got it, or not media, but because of the media, the general public has got something against the Hindus or the Indians. They somehow feel we are kind of, you know, kind of quaint, but backward people, you know, kind of antiquated people and kind of charming and unusual and colorful, but quite weird. This is why this question arose. And the answer that I was going to give, which came from Narendra Modi, and I like that very much. He said people were asking him, some politicians were asking him at a very political meeting, uh, you know, this, about this snake charming, because they always think India means snake charmers. They've got nothing but just charm snakes all over in every street corner. So Narendra Modi is very clever. He's, I like this guy. He's got this, you know, ability to have immediate repartee, immediate response. 
He said, yeah, in the ancient days we used to be snake charmers, but now we are playing with the mouse, <laughs> with the mice, you know, the computer. So this idea of responding that we have really grown quite a lot and we are not some kind of antiquated, outdated civilization. But look, despite the media's bias, look, media is severely biased against India and against Hinduism. They only show in BBC special, I really keep firing at the BBC, I want them to sue me. Because the BBC has been the biggest culprit in producing, giving a very most negative image regarding what India and Hinduism is all about, forever and ever. Long time ago, they asked me to do a, a, help them do a document on Sister Nivedita, a set, set of the first girls' school in India. I said, wonderful, I'll help you. And they know how the documentary came out? Sisters of Kali, terrorist. I said, how did this come, in, come about? And I wrote to the BBC, I in fact wrote to the House of Lords saying the BBC charter should be taken off. These people are thoroughly biased. And then I got a nice response from House of Lords. Mr. Lakhani, we have taken note of your concerns. We have noted it down. So the BBC bias continues. And the media bias has done tremendous harm to India and Hinduism. It's necessary to smack, you know, give it back. The only way we can perhaps avoid this media bias, especially if kind of focused on BBC, is using social media. We can bypass the you know, mainstream media like the BBC to portray the correct vision of Hinduism. There are two ways media can do, be biased against you. They can either show your religion in a very poor light, because there are always weird things in every religion. They can just focus on that, oh, this is Hinduism. Some naked fakir jumping in the Ganga or something. Oh, this is Hinduism. The second way they can show their bias is by ignoring the positive thing that particular religion possesses. And they have done that repeatedly to me. I get into the BBC once in a while, because the positive things we possess, like spiritual humanism, focusing on humanity, not on a god, is a dramatic idea suited to this society. They love it but they won't let me, give me any entrance. Or the second idea of religious pluralism. Different religions are talking of the same thing using different vocabulary, suited to their own times and needs of the people. These two major ideas that are at the heart of Hinduism are not allowed to get expression in the, in the, in the, in the media like BBC. They say, Mr. Lakhan, we love you, we always got you on the top of the list, we will invite you. But then they'll find somebody from the temple, they ah, singing, this is Hinduism. So the esoteric Hinduism get, gets lost. They do it deliberately.